Ba boom we are back with another video we will got a lot of stuff to go this video probably around 20 or 30 minutes we got through tesla and the video the ai sector gold oil the bitcoin sector the crypto stocks the airline sector we're also going to go over the cruise lines the solar sector the cannabis sector we'll go over gamestop amc as well and a lot of things okay so make sure you smash the like button subscribe if you are new stay tuned also watch the video before this one on the s&p 500 the major news we got tomorrow if that's going to start pulling us up and down and so forth so gamestop and um also let's get this video over 100 likes within blah, 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 four five hours okay so i'll actually you smash the like button it's free it literally take you one second. You can like it right now. Now, GameStop earnings was today, okay? GameStop is trying to move up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, since it's literally like coming out right now, we'll go over it. I'm going to go over a couple other stocks, and then we're going to come back to GameStop and AMC to see how the earnings is kind of going to balance out, okay? You're already starting to see a little jump up right here as we're recording it. So maybe the earnings is out, and it's kind of pushing it. Remember... Also on GameStop, I told y'all if it held that support and it started pushing up and it broke that resistance, that was might be able to take GameStop up. What did I say? To around $25. And that did hit actually. Okay. So that was the only play I saw on GameStop right now. And that actually did hit. So now we're trying to see what's going to happen after the earnings. And now, as you tell, look, it reversed. So we're going to go over that. Just kind of let it balance out. Let's go ahead and go over to the AI sectors first, like NVIDIA, AMD, SMCI, and then we'll come back to this. Okay. So NVIDIA, NVIDIA is pretty, a little bit stalled in this range after these, this big like week of droppage after the earnings. And it's just kind of stalled in this range. I haven't bought any more long-term shares. There's no need to. Um, I don't think it's done on the downside. I'm still bearish on NVIDIA unless it tells me otherwise. But for right now, it's just kind of very slow in this range. So I do want to add some new levels. We have a resistance right here about 110. Now, the key thing about this is on NVIDIA stock, if we break that 110 area, I do believe that's going to take NVIDIA up to about 116. And I'm looking to play potential call options on that shorter term, though, right? I might scalp it or I might hold a day swing by it like today and sell it tomorrow. Something like that. If that 110 breaks, that is something I'm watching. And then our support level is about 104. If that breaks, NVIDIA is going down below 100. That is where I want to buy more NVIDIA at, though, is below 100. If it just stays in this range, there's really no point in me buying it um, for more long-term shares because we bought in the range when it was there in like the beginning of August and July. So that's pretty much it on NVIDIA. Is not much to do on this NVIDIA front as it's kind of just stalled. I would say the bigger moves will come either that support breaks or that resistance breaks, and then you'll know how I'm looking to play it if that does break. AMD breaking that resistance level. So remember I told you if it breaks that resistance level, it'll probably go to 143, 144 in that range so now that it is breaking we have our new resistance all the way up here i'll probably put it right right around 108 i mean 108 148 even just kind of watch that i don't own any um amd long term i'm just waiting there's other opportunities right now that i kind of like than buying amd at this price range but we do have our resistance and we also have a new support now at about 136.50 so 136.50 is our new support on AMD and resistance is about 148. I'm expecting AMD to reach up maybe to around the 144. So there might be a little more push on AMD. That is a potential scalp also. I think it might reach around like 144-ish. And right now it's about, it closed around around 142.93. So I think it still has a good dollar move ahead of it. So we'll kind of see how that plays. But you got your resistance, you got your support. When do I want to buy long-term shares AMD if, if AMD gets to 120? That's when I'll get long-term shares. If it doesn't get there, I'll probably just let it move from now and then do a swing on it. Um, if it really starts pushing up, I'll probably swing it into the 160, high 160s, 170s, and then try to play it that way. So I'm trying to see how I want to play it, but these are the two levels I see for now. AVGO, nice push. Pretty much some of the stocks had decent pushes today, but it doesn't get them out of their bearish territories. Not to yet. We do have support at 136.40 on AVGO, and we also have resistance. I'm going to put resistance at about 152.10, 152 even. Just watch that. If that starts to break, then AVGO might want to push to 160, and that's a potential upside play. But um, I don't want to buy AVGO just yet because it's not that far away from its all-time highs. It's only down about 19% from its all-time highs. So there's other better opportunities that I like than playing AVGO right now for like a long-term buy. Um, I'm kind of just being patient on it and just waiting. 
for a better opportunity. If it don't have one, it don't have one. I'll just be playing other names. We don't have to just focus on this one, right? Uh, SMCI, little push, nothing really. Pretty much stalled in that range. We have support at 382. That's the bigger support that actually hit perfect on Friday, y'all remember? But we're going to change the support now to our new concurrent support right around 394.20. 394.20 and then how I find these supports make sure you join personal training first thing in the description on the website that's where I teach you how I find support resistance the, the four-step strategy of how we're consistent every week very very beneficial if you want to become a monster if you want to stay retail just don't even join okay because I'm not teaching you no retail things I don't teach you RSI I don't teach you Mac MD I don't teach you that's all that is useless to me and we don't need it okay but um 394.20 that's our new support on SNCI that's about it. It's not too much I would do on SSCI right now in this range, okay? I just don't. It just doesn't give me the hope that I'll win on a play, so I just don't play it, and I just stick to other stuff for now. Unless something gets good on it, then I'll come back to it, but for now, it's probably just in that stalled range. So we went over AVGO, went over NVIDIA. Went over, did we go over AMD? AMD? Yeah, we did go over AMD. Went over AVGO. Okay, I think we went over... So Intel, my... Game plan on Intel is once it breaks 18, I'll probably buy a little bit more. Other than that, I'm not really looking to do much with Intel. I'm not really looking to play offers on it. I'm not really looking to buy more shares on it. I'm kind of just letting it do its thing for now. That's a, really the main thing I'm watching out for on Intel right now. And also MU. We don't really talk about MU, but MU did crash off its all-time highs of about 157. And it's all the way down to $86, which is down close to about 45% from its all-time highs. The only thing is it hasn't had earnings yet. It has earnings at the end of September. So that is something that's a potential, right? It did have some nice growth ever since like 2012. It kind of went up. And now we're coming back down to prices of 2024 of February and all the way back down to prices of 2022 of February, always back down here. So nothing crazy play, but I, it is something potentially that I'm kind of watching out for. Let me throw Baba. I think Baba might be ready for me to get shares. I'm looking to play shares on this to reach up to about... What was my target on Baba? I think my target on Baba. Eh, let me see. I probably play Baba up to about but at least above 110 for like a potential shares. That's where I'm kind of looking to take it. So say 110 is up here. That's about a 31% gain. Or if it came back down and broke 80, I probably lose about four. So that's a good risk to reward. It's not bad. I think I might get Baba shares tomorrow. Uh, so kind of stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and go over AMC and GameStop. So AMC stalled that resistance level at five dollars that I gave y'all. If you go to the 15 minute chart, you kind of see the last two days it kind of just stalled and it doesn't really look like it wants to break that resistance. So I would say still watch that level. But honestly, there's not much to do in this range of AMC. It really hasn't moved since like May. When it really had those big movements and now it's really just stalled okay it's not really doing much it's not going up it's not going down it's just stalled right around five dollars so let's go ahead and go over to gamestop so gamestop earnings did come out let's check to see how it did and pretty balanced i don't see too much let's see what they're kind of doing right here um yeah pretty balanced if i do say so myself I don't really see too much going on with the AM or any updates on it, but I think, yeah, they did post their earnings. That's why you're kind of seeing the movements. It's just not updating right here for me. And then I don't want to click off. So, but um, depending on what the earnings is, not really showing me just yet. It seems balanced. Doesn't seem like it wants to go up. Doesn't seem like it wants to go down. Just kind of balanced in this range. So I would say probably see how it kind of stalls out for the next like 10 minutes after this. See how it opens in the pre-market and then see how tomorrow moves as well. Does it want to continue off that price movements or not? We have resistance at 23.75. Support is at 21.70, but I'm going to actually switch support now to about 22.50. And then you can watch those two levels on GameStop. And then you want to see how it moves off of this earnings movement. Does it want to continue this run that it's been doing ever since about August 28th? That does it want to start going down. If we start breaking that resistance level, that might show signs that GameStop wants to reach in the high 20s, meaning 27, 28 in that range on the higher side. If we could break above that resistance and really start pushing, that might be something potential. But other than that, if it just goes down, there's not really much to do on that downside. OK, so we'll kind of see how I would say the important part is how does GameStop open and how does it move within that first 30 minutes to an hour of the market? And that might be more ideal to see what GameStop kind of wants to do for that day. OK, so there you go.
Um, let's go over to Tesla. So Tesla looking Tesla looking like it wants to break that resistance at 230. Tesla hasn't moved really ever since that earnings drop. Just kind of been zigzag stalled in here. We got our two support levels. We got our resistance level. They really haven't changed. Um, yeah, it's just not much to do with Tesla in this range. I haven't bought more long-term shares. I am thinking about potential swing calls if we break that 230 mark. That might be a nice potential to trade up into like the 240s. I won't say the 250s just yet, but maybe the 240s, okay? That's pretty much it when I'm looking out for Tesla. It's pretty simple in that range. Um, Apple did have its event. Nothing too much going on with the Apple event. I would say maybe the iPhone had like it has a new button, okay? Maybe better pictures, of course. New colors, wow. The, the um, AirPods Max, all they had was new color and um it was a new color and USB C now over four years no improvements amazing the watch had more improvements i like the watch more improvements um the smaller airpods had like they could you could do like hearing tests now that's a little better improvement the watch maybe more like surfer type updates um yeah that's pretty much it and not too much okay not too much with the apple event nothing crazy probably a disappointment they just really haven't really broke through nothing for the past, the latest releases, if I'm being honest. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. But Apple just don't interest me, if I'm being honest. The stock really don't interest me. I know the stock usually goes up, so that's cool. If you can get Apple at like a 15, maybe 20% drop, that's usually the good time to get Apple. Like here, it was about 34% drop. This drop was about 25% drop. This drop during all the vid stuff was about 30%. So it seems like 20 to 30 is usually the sweet spot to get Apple shares. Sometimes 15 though, because this one right here would about 17. So I'll say about 15 to 30% once it drops is usually a time to start getting Apple shares. Let's, let's look at this drop right here. It was about, yes, yeah, he was about 17. So right when it gets like low 15, you kind of just buy it up till it get like 30% or if it does, and then you usually hold it till it starts going up. That's how typically pro probably play apple okay i would probably just play it through that pattern yeah it has support but it kind of broke that support so i'm gonna just clear everything off of apple right now and let's just see how it moves tomorrow um like a couple days after event to see if it starts giving up the run or what have you right so that's what i was trying to do at apple um uh, meta stock is bearish to me we have support 496.50 once that breaks i think meta's going to the 480s and I'm kind of just looking for downside on Meta stock right now. I don't really trust the upward movements. Ever since it made all-time highs here, we actually played that. Uh, I'm just looking for more downside right now on Meta stock. Let's go ahead and go over to. I'll throw DJT in here. DJT is in the gutter. I would say. Remember what I said around October 18th, and then on DJT might get a little more interesting closer to the election time. I think today um, is actually the presidential debate with Kamala and Trump. If I'm not mistaken, I think it is today, though. So we'll see. Maybe that might affect uh, DJT. It had a little push today right here. If you can see that, like I say, the more and more closer it gets, you'll probably start seeing some more push in DH, uh, DJT. It might get a little more interesting. Let's go over ASTS. I had some questions on this and also in the um, Discord. Make sure you join the Discord. These were the buys that we kind of did today, the plays. Um, I did Amazon calls. That was about 13% gains. So we did Apple puts. That was about 10% gains. And whenever I send it out, I send you guys a month strike price that I paid. Um, whenever we're live, when you join the team, we have private live streams. I let you guys know where I'm looking to get in, where I'm looking to exit, what type of profit I'm looking at. Is it a fast play, slow play? Am I taking profits faster? I kind of lay it out to really build you into a monster where you can help yourself become consistent and not just stay retail, right? And, all, and we also did IW and put options. That was about 27% gains also. Then I also sold the rest of my Palantir shares for about 11% gain. I only bought it to go to 34.35. I know y'all remember that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go to Palantir right after ASTS. ASTS is pretty much kind of nasty to me. Um, it's getting a little softer off that support at $27. And it's kind of just drifting down. And I don't really see a play on it. Yes, it did have a nice movement. But this is a bigger drop than any of these drops, right? These drops show strength of trying to go back up right after the drop. This has not. It tried to show strength here, but it gave that back up. All these times, it shows strength, and it went. So strength, went. So strength, went. It always went after the strength, and now it just hasn't done that. So maybe this is changing. We'll see. But it's just nothing I see on it clearly. Where I would feel confident in being like, well, if it breaks here, it goes here. I don't see that yet. But Palantir, remember the reason I bought it, I told you all Palantir would go to around $34 to 
34 to 35 dollars it did that that was the whole reason i bought at 31 dollars in the first place okay now i do have a new target of 40 dollars but it doesn't mean i'm gonna change my first play to try to hold for dear life and then catch the 40. no i did my first play i took the profit and now i'm gonna wait for a second play to form in here for me to take it to 40 dollars. so whenever i play that you'll see that on the discord team whenever you join but yeah, I already took my profits. If it goes up without me, it just goes up without me. I don't really care about that. I'll just wait for the next play to form. So for now, we have resistance at 37.10. I'm hoping we get some pull down around that resistance, pull down to a support, support builds up, and then I catch it for the next run to $40. So what I'm going to do is I want to switch this support. New support now is right around $33.60. Because remember, they got the addition to the SP500. So $30.60. That's what I'll be watching. That's how I'm kind of playing Palantir stock for now. Okay. Um, our dividend account is booming, by the way. AT&T we got is booming. I know y'all remember, remember me telling you about AT&T, how it was going to boom up after it broke $17.50, right? We were buying AT&T here. We're literally up a lot on AT&T right now. We're literally chilling. Um, oh, Realty we bought. We're up on that. Pepsi we bought. We're up on that. We bought MO. We're up on that as well. We bought some SPHD. We're up on that because dividends usually do a little good. Recession times, fear times, people try to put money to make more consistent profits than putting in the riskier stocks like small caps and so forth. They'll do worse while the dividend account will phenomenal and go up. So our dividend account right now is booming. Okay. We started that dividend account. I can't remember when. I think we started the dividend account. Uh, team, correct me. I think in July. I think July we kind of started buying our dividend stocks. Somewhere in here, we started buying it, and then we're up a lot. So, yeah, that's our dividend side. Um, some stocks I'm looking to buy heavy. Nike, y'all know that. Disney, looking to buy that. Um, and some other stocks. Target as well. Let me check Starbucks. Eh, Starbucks not really doing much. Let's go ahead and go over to gold. How is gold doing? Huh, of course. Hit the support, push up. Not much to do on gold. I think gold would do good in recession times. I think Amazon would do good. Let's go to Amazon real quick. I think Amazon would do good in recession times. I almost kind of just want to buy here and just let it ride for like a good year just to see what happens on it. Because I think if we do go to recessions, Amazon would do good and they'll get a lot of market share because people want to buy stuff that's cheaper. And I think I think um Amazon Amazon did something. Oh, uh, they did something to compete with Walmart. I forgot what it was, but that's also decently. So they're going to do pretty good, I think, in recessions. Probably McDonald's as well. You see, McDonald's really hasn't dropped, right? McDonald's will probably do good in recessions. And then gold will do good in recession times as well. So just kind of watch that. Nothing new on gold for now. We have to drop. I just want to see if it wants to continue. That's when I want to buy. But for now, we need more push out of here to kind of confirm that. We just haven't had that yet. OXY. Also, any other stocks you guys want me to add in tomorrow's video, let me know. Comment it down below as fast as possible. Make sure you get the video over 100 likes within five hours. That's all I ask. It'll take you one second to smash it. Yeah, I know I give y'all A1 levels. It's free to watch. Okay? Just smash the like button. That's it. Um, yeah, OXY, like I told y'all, oil is bearish, right? I told y'all oil is bearish a long time ago, and it's steadily dropping. So, oil is bearish, and I believe OXY is going below $50, so maybe... I clear all this off. Oh man, I took my target off. Let me put that back on. So my target on OXY is 50 now. That's my new target. My old target was like 54. That hit. My new target is 50. It's most likely gonna hit. But if we get a little push up from here, I'll probably get puts right there to drop us down below that 50 mark and win on those puts. That's pretty much it for oil. It is bearish, which is good for oil prices because the raptor takes a lot to fill up. Okay, so that's pretty good. We can go over to Bitcoin, the Bitcoin. Bitcoin pretty much stalled, shorter term resistance, 58,300, support 53,300, not much going on with, um, I want to buy more Bitcoin below 50,000 and I want to get Ethereum below 2,000. Even 2,300 for Ethereum is not bad. If you believe in it, if you believe it's going to go up over time, if you just believe in the projects, if you believe everything in Ethereum, then it's not bad, right? Again, as a financial advisor, all educated person, don't try to get this video, you will lose money on just on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the crypto side. The main stock in the crypto sector I want to get is Coinbase. I believe, okay, on the next crypto cycle, Coinbase would be over $300. Right now it's 158. I needed it to come down, okay, because it made a high of about 280, but the run started from here at about $56. 
So it was up a lot. I didn't want to buy it too high. Even though I believe it's going here, I just didn't want to buy it too high. And thank goodness I didn't buy it up there because now it's down about 44%. So I think I'm going to start averaging in on some Coinbase positions. Because uh, I don't know if, I don't think it's going to drop below $100. It might, but that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. I kind of just want to get shares. They also have earnings at the end and around November. That's kind of a while. So I'll probably just start slowly averaging in. I still do have shares of Coinbase that I bought at 101 over here, which are up over 58%. Uh, I have about 20% left of those. We were taking a lot of profits up here. But that's what I'm kind of thinking on Coinbase. Also, MST. I will be over $200 the next crypto cycle run, which is just not ready yet. But the next cycle run, you'll see these stocks booming. And also, Hood will get some share of that too. Because more people might buy crypto on hood, which means they make money off fees. Like Coinbase makes money off the fees. That's where they get their most money from. And the more crypto runs up, the more people buy crypto, the more fees they get, the more money they make, and more earnings that boost them up. Okay. So, yeah, hood will get some of that too. Huh. The next crypto cycle for hood, though, I'm going to say $30. We're just not that far from the high. So, Coinbase is probably like the number one. Then, of course, the miners. They're all crashing, so there's no point of looking at those. Neo, Lucid, Rivian in the gutter. But the thing about Neo is it's actually starting to push decently from here. The only thing is it's too vertical. Um, so it doesn't really interest me just yet because it's too vertical. So I would say for now, there is a resistance, I would say, like around here, around 565. Maybe watch that. I don't really see a play on Neo just yet. It's kind of just moving. This is like free price action to me. There's really not a clean play that I see. So I'll probably just let Neo move for now and then potentially see if there's something. The inner, the, not the energy, the solar sector is energy and solar in the gutter. End phase is down. I'm waiting on that. FSLR, which is first solar. I'm waiting on that. And also Sunrun is crashing. I'm waiting on that. I think those do better once interest rates start to drop. Also, TOT, I want to buy more of that. And TMF, the 3x leverage of the 20 um, Treasury. But they're going to do good as well, especially once interest rates start to drop. So TMF, TOT, I need to buy more of those this week. I need to buy more of the dividend this week. Thank you, Disney, this week. And just kind of averaging on those long bills because TMF will do over 150% gains probably the next coming years, right? Say it took three years. For a team to do 150% gains, that's 50% compounded per year. You're doing five times the national average just on one stock, right? That's what I try to focus on, kind of. Um, but Yerb, Snapchat, what is Snapchat doing? Uh, still crashing. So Snapchat, I think around next earnings, Snapchat will probably, hopefully, so do something like that. Uh, we've been right the past couple earnings. Remember, I crashed here. We played the puts. I said next earnings, it might want to push. It did push. This earnings crash. This earnings, I'm thinking, upside. So I want to play the shares, and I also want to play the earnings play, which is around October. So you got plenty of time for that, like a good month. But that's just something I'm kind of looking out for on um, Snapchat. Also, SoFi stock, nice pull down. It's not really much to do on SoFi stock, I'm being honest. It really hasn't moved since March. And a stock that hasn't moved in months and months and months and months does not interest me, right? That's more retail than being a monster. So. Like I told y'all, we did three plays a day with 50% gains total. And that's all we had to do. We were done within first. We was we were done with the market within 30 minutes of trading. And that's it, man. Right? The market is very simple. If you break it down, you get focus. You focus on the strategy more than the profits. The profits will follow once you have a right strategy because you'll be winning with the right strategy. And that's what I teach you when you join a team with personal training, man. Um, I'm trying to think. It's kind of a long. We're already at 24 minutes. Uh... I'll leave it there and I'll post. We'll, I'll try to probably got to post like three videos tomorrow to get everything out. But make sure you guys join the team. Lifetime membership is available. We'll also come some personal training. Okay. Elite is $74 a month. Elite year, $740 for the year. You also get two free months when you do the year. Personal training, $965 one time fee, which is so low. Price is going up Monday, by the way. Then any questions, you can email me, willknowledge77gmail.com. Any questions you have or, you know, just make sure you email me right here. And then, yeah, thank you guys for being a part of the team. Thank you guys for watching. Smash the like button, subscribing. And always remember, no recommendation about so anything, just for educational purposes only. So do not trade anything you see or hear in the video. Catch you guys at the next one. Bye.